Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a Harlan County community was able to get some relief yesterday as officials worked on Llewellyn Lake. And some employees of a Commonwealth organization are getting the opportunity to pursue their education for no cost. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. The time is 6 a.m. on Friday, February 16th. Now let's check in with meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. Good morning, Olivia, and good morning, everyone. We knew it's going to be a tricky forecast heading through this evening, as Cameron alluded to last night and I did yesterday morning. Ground temps are warm. The profile of the atmosphere teeter-tottering back and forth. And yes, indeed, I think it's the intensity of the rainfall that leads to the intensity of the snowfall heading through tonight. So it's a blast of cold air, but at least it's short lived for Saturday as we deal with slick road conditions heading through tonight. Winter weather advisories posted for all of eastern Kentucky. Not so as you make your way from London and Middlesbrough back toward Pulaski and Wayne counties. They officially kick off at 4 o'clock this afternoon and last until 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. The clouds have increased as we check out the view outside our studios here in Hazard. 34, we're all in the 30s right now, minus 28 degrees at Irvin. All right, the uh, pinpoint Doppler radar quiet now. The satellite radar composite showing how the clouds have increased, and that is the system we'll be dealing with later today and through tonight. Here's the planner. Mostly cloudy, rain arrives mid to late afternoon, highs upper 40s and close to 50. Your snowfall forecast with the seven day forecast coming up in a few moments. Olivia. All right, Tim, thank you. The situation was better last night after a leak at a Harlan County Lake threatened to flood homes in the Llewellyn community. Officials used a water pump to lower water levels at Llewellyn Lake. They also diverted streams that typically run into the lake to run into Clover Fork. Judge Executive Dan Mosley says he does not believe this will cause any more flooding issues. The, the water levels have declined in the rivers the last few days. Uh, that it's been dry, so uh, we're, we're not. That's not a concern at this point. And and with the long range forecast, it doesn't concern us to do that because uh, there's not going to be enough moisture uh, coming to the area to, to to warrant any type of flood risk over the the next uh, uh, five to seven days. Members of the Llewellyn community say they are grateful for the quick response to the emergency and hope the owners of the lake take action to prevent this from happening again. London police are looking for a Laurel County man. Here's a picture of him. He is 24 year old Thurman Brock. He goes by Jimmy. Brock is wanted on charges of promoting promoting a minor and a sex performance and sexual abuse. The victim is younger than the age of 12. Police say Brock is known to drive a white 2012 Chevy Equinox with the license plate J0T626. If you see him or know where he is, call the London, London Laurel County 911 Center at 606-878-7000. In Estill County, a man has been charged in a serious animal cruelty case. Delbert Weber pleaded guilty to one count of second degree animal cruelty Wednesday. He was originally charged with 73 counts for the 73 dogs found in dirty cages in his home back in September. A judge, judge sentenced Weber to 180 days of home incarceration. He is allowed work release two days a week. He will also pay court costs. He is not allowed to have any new animals. Two men are behind bars after police reportedly found drugs on them during a traffic stop in Johnson County. According to an arrest citation we obtained, the incident happened back on February 2nd. In the citation, Paintsville police began a chase when the driver nearly caused a crash. When the two men were eventually pulled over, police reportedly found suspected meth on William Stapleton and Philip Parsons. We now know the funeral arrangements for a 10 year old Corbin boy. Drake Sutherland died Tuesday in a Whitley County crash. 
He was a fourth grade student at Corbin Elementary. His obituary says he loved sports, listening to music, playing video games and teasing his siblings. His visitation will be Sunday from 4 to 7 p.m. at Emanuel Baptist Church in Corbin. The funeral will be held Monday afternoon at 2, also at the church. More schools will be closed today due to illnesses. There's no in-person learning at Somerset Independent, but it's an NTI day. Lee County schools will also be closed today. They report more than 125 students were out yesterday due to various illnesses, including COVID and the flu. Now imagine having the opportunity to further your education and being one step closer to achieving your goal at no cost. For 12 Mountain Comprehensive Health Corporation employees, that became a reality. WIMT's Jack Demler has more from the RACE program's first graduation. Edgar Lucas, an employee of MCHC, has a goal of one day becoming a registered nurse. And on Thursday, Lucas celebrated getting one step closer to that goal after becoming a certified medical assistant through a special program that overcame barriers. And it was just a great opportunity, the ability to better ourselves without having to choose whether we can eat or where we can live. Uh, during that period of time, uh, it's been fantastic. Lucas is just one of 12 newly certified medical assistants who became the first class of the MCHC RAISE program. I can't put it into words. Um, I just see this as truly life changing and it's just so nice to see and I cannot wait to see where they grow from here. A program that gives people the chance to get closer to their goals at no cost. I don't want any barrier for any employee to be what they wanted to be, what they dreamed of when they were a child. Providing solutions to many problems. So many times um, we have seen people and we've heard stories of how people have had to, to quit their current jobs or they've had to go part time in order to be able to uh, you know, to, to get that educational and career goal that they're, they're looking for to benefit their family. Creating win-win scenarios for everyone. The employee wins because they don't have to go part-time or lose wages. We win because we get their skill levels uh, and a commitment from them for around a year or whatever, you know, the, the degree is they're looking for. And, and the community wins because we have skilled employees that's able to take care of them raising opportunities while lowering barriers. In Whitesburg, Jack Demler, WYMT Mountain News. MCHC currently has 132 of their employees enrolled in these programs. McCall says he hopes to continue to do celebrations similar to last night's to acknowledge what the students have accomplished. Governor Andy Bashir discussed the impact of a new agriculture business coming to Pulaski County. Bosch Berries is based out of the Netherlands and has been operating since the 1850s. The company is locating a greenhouse operation in Somerset, reportedly investing nearly $50 million and creating 28 full-time jobs. Governor Andy Bashir says the business adds to economic growth in the state. Bosch Berries is a sixth generation family farm operation founded in 1854 and has been involved in greenhouse cultivation since the 1930s. The company currently operates two greenhouses and I look forward to welcoming its third right here in Kentucky. So I'd now like to invite Timon Vandenbosch. During his briefing, the governor also announced the Kentucky National Guard being named the 2023 Association of the U.S. Army's Best National Guard Command, marking the first time that has happened. The Appalachian Center for the Arts in Pikeville is celebrating the town's bicentennial with a weekend of plays. Spirits of Pikeville's Past is a production commissioned by the Pikeville 200 group, displaying a weekend of plays that celebrate stories of influential and important people in the town's history. Kentucky playwrights produced the pieces, highlighting names like author Effie Waller-Smith, aviation pioneer John Paul Riddle, and cut-through champion Mayor William Hambly. Over two nights, we're doing three on Friday, three on Saturday, and all of it is a celebration of the different, of the different achievements of a variety of people from Pikeville. Today is sold out, but free tickets are still available for Saturday's shows.
And a good Friday morning. Let's get you prepped and ready to get out the door because the drive home won't be like the drive in this morning. Yes, the winter weather advisory kicks off at 4 o'clock this afternoon, lasts until 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. It is not in effect for those of you out towards Somerset. So that means Pulaski County, Wayne County, Laurel, Whitley, McCreary, Knox, and Bell counties. That doesn't mean you're not going to see some snow. It just there's a certain criteria for this to be issued. And it looks like a lot of us across eastern Kentucky up towards 64 from Moorhead to Ashland, one to two inches of snow, upwards of three. Again, I-64 corridor and the high terrain as you make way through Pike County and Letcher counties. The clouds have increased as we look outside our studios. And we're basically in the 30s, minus Irvin still sticking at 28 degrees. Here's the increase of cloud cover over the last several hours. There's the storm that's coming in for later today and into tonight. So let's get you ready and get you out the door. Again, the rain arrives mid to late afternoon and forecast highs before the onset of the precipitation, upper 40s and close to 50. Your snowfall forecast is coming up in just a few moments. Olivia. All right, thank you, Tim, and thanks for joining Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Still to come, investigators are revealing new details about what may have led to the shooting at the Super Bowl victory parade in Kansas City.